What we have in this problem is a single degree of freedom system made up of block of mass m, a spring of stiffness k between the block and ground, a spring of also stiffness k between the block and this base b, where b is given a prescribed motion of y naught sine omega t. We're interested in the steady state response of the block, and what we want to do is find a range of frequencies of omega for which the uh, amplitude of the motion of the block, A, does not exceed 1.5 times the amplitude of B. So we, we're, we're going to allow the motion of A to exceed that of B by 50%. 50 Over what range of frequency is that possible? So I'm going to draw a free body diagram of block A. X is defined here as the motion of block A. And X is going to be equal to a zero whenever the, those springs are unstretched. So what I have is the spring over here on the right side. It's going to have a magnitude of K times X. When X is plus, in other words, that block is displaced to the right, that spring on the right is compressed. The second spring here, its force is going to be k times the difference between the motion of b and of a. So what I'm going to do is write this down as y minus x. If at some instant in time y is larger than x, that means that that spring is compressed. And compressed springs are going to push. We also have things like the reaction forces at the wheels. We have weight. But what's important to us is what's going on in the x direction. So as I use Newton's second law, when I sum forces in x, I get minus kx. Again, x is positive to the right. That spring force is pointing to the left, so it's a minus. The spring force on the left side is pointing to the right, so that's a plus. And, therefore, that is equal to ma, which is mx double dot as that. So our equation of motion, we don't really need any kinematics here. So our equation of motion for this system is mx double dot plus 2kx is equal to k times y. So that's k times y naught times sine omega t. The solution. If we're looking for the steady state solution, that is going to be given by some amplitude, which I'll call a, times sine omega t. If I substitute this back into the equation of motion, in other words, I combine these two together, I get minus m omega squared plus 2k times a sine omega t. On the right-hand side, I have k y naught sine omega t. The coefficients in front of sine must balance out left side and right side. So therefore, what I have is minus m omega squared plus 2k times a must be balanced out by k times y naught. So therefore the amplitude of that response is k y naught divided by minus m omega squared plus 2k. That is the amplitude of our response. And we want to make sure that that amplitude does not exceed We'll make sure that this does not exceed 1.5 why not. What frequency range, what range of values for omega can we have that make that true? Well, first thing, let's make a plot of this. Let's plot amplitude A versus the frequency of omega. Let me change that. Let me draw the 
it like this. Again, on the x-axis, I'm going to be plotting the frequency of excitation. On this one, I'm going to be plotting A. When omega is equal to a zero, A is equal to simply um, y naught over, over 2. So this comes off here at y naught over 2. We know that there is a value of omega for which the amplitude of A goes off to inf infinity, and that's going to be when omega is equal to the square root of 2k over m. In other words, whenever that frequency is equal to the natural frequency of omega n, we have that. So as we look at increasing o o omega A goes like this, and then once it passes through the resonance frequency of omega n, it comes down like this. What our goal is, is to find the values of omega such that the amplitude A, the magnitude, is no larger than 1.5 why not? It looks like I made a, a mistake here, so let me correct this. This here, I think I said it right, but I wrote it down wrong. That should be why not over 2. So what we want to do is make sure that the amplitude stays below um, 2, well, not 2, but 1.5, why not? So this is going to be one value of omega. Let me call that omega 1. But keep in mind that A also takes on a negative sign, S-I-G-N sign. So down here, as long as we stay to the right of omega 2, we are guaranteed that the amplitude and magnitude is less than 1.5, why not? So we're going to solve for two values of omega. We said A was equal to K, why not? Divided by minus M omega squared plus 2K. And we're going to set that equal to 1.5 why not. So the why nots will cancel out. And so what I will do is first divide through by k. One point five, and so the omega one that makes that equal to one point five is going to be one over one point five is equal to two minus m over k omega one squared. So that frequency corresponds to omega one equal to uh, one over one point five minus two. Um, and then let me change the minuses through like this. So this is a square root, square root of k over m. So that's the, the value of omega that makes the value of a equal to 1.5, why not? We also want to make a equal to minus. 1.5, why not? So this is k naught minus m omega squared plus 2k equal to minus 1.5, why not? Of course, the value of why not uh, will cancel out. So what we have here on the left-hand side is 1 divided by minus m over k omega 2, we're solving for a new value of omega, plus 2 is equal to minus 1.5. So I do the same solution idea that I did before. Minus 1.5 on the left side is equal to 2 minus m over k omega 2 squared. So omega 2 then is equal to um, 1, 1 1.5 plus 2 omega 2 squared.
times, oops, let, let me, uh, it was a false start here. Wasn't watching what I w w was doing. What I need, need to do is do the, the 1 over 1.5 plus 2 is equal to m over k omega 2 squared. So the value of omega 2 that makes that true is going to be equal to the square root of 1 over 1 1.5 plus 2, like this, square root of k over m. So, so the answer is, for the magnitude of A to be less than 1.5, why not? We need to have omega to be less than omega 1, or we need to have omega to be greater than omega 2, where omega 1 and omega 2 are as shown above. How did we do this? Well, we start out with our FPD. We, we got our equation of motion. And writing down the steady state response, we solve for this amplitude A. I think the key step here was to make a plot of A. And what we want to do is find values of omega such that the amplitude of A is less than 1.5 why not? So it's all the values of omega to the left of omega 1 and all the values of omega 2 of omega to the right of omega 2. And so we solve for omega 1 and omega 2 and know that this is what we need.